And that's the thing for me, right? Because no matter how far back you go in time, when has anyone ever conquered land? And then the people who were conquered asked the conqueror, could you please give us back the throne? And then the conqueror is like, yeah, you know what? It was wrong for me to take over your kingdom and take your resources. Here, you can have your throne back and I'll just go back to where I came from. Thank you. When is it ever? <laughs> I get so embarrassed every single time I hear black people asking people for the land. Guys, did we lose that badly? Oh, it, oh, it, oh, it gets to me. What do you mean, can we have the land back? We need to make a plan to just get the land back. Simple. I don't need to be talking to Yanni and his child. I don't need talking to... If he wants to come talk to me because he's surrendering the land, I can take that. But not with now must negotiate with you. We say, okay, sharp. So you remember we lost. Yeah. Ah, uh, what is that? what is that but as messed up as it was and as much as it was an injustice i have to give props to the design of apartheid the design of the oppression the way it was designed to sustain itself and allow or create the oppressed to continue to oppress themselves to feed into the very same system that was designed to oppress them absolutely genius oh brilliant dog like just just think about what it did besides taking the land it's it goes back to the inferiority complex i mean if someone's going to come tell you about some great individual it doesn't look like you who actually is of melanin origins and then they come they change the host hey the romans huh and also think about the disruption that has done to us just as a, a civilization the disruption of so much history of spiritual connection that just totally so earlier you said that you have a question or basically something that you wanted us to discuss or touch on why is it that when you grow up in a particular area it's nice Kumnandi, you know that there's a certain um challenges in that particular area and then you kind of get the, um, that economic uh, emancipation a bit you then leave it's like i'm thinking about where i come from maybury park there's a lot of stuff that we can myself and my peers who grew up there who all left there's a lot we can still do for that community there's a lot there's a lot but because we're, we're we're now in this current system where you know you have to now i guess independence is almost like a currency now you leave so the issue is not so much the moving out the issue is just more not the giving back right it's like we don't understand the concept that you've moved and you're in someone else's community and you've left your own community in the right instead of understanding that one day you want the people who do grow up where you grew up not to have a need to leave because you've solved a lot of the issues that cause a lot of us to want to leave the hoods that we grow up in so that responsibility i mean if you want a prime example just think about or research the story of usadio mane the footballer liverpool footballer while well, current is at Bayern Munich but look at his story and look at exactly why he's doing what he's doing he is the heartbeat of that village the heartbeat of that community and the families that live in it because ideally you would want a situation like you know Abu Ntlantalax for instance he's in the hood I think he's he, he's well off enough to leave the hood but because that's those are his people that's his community he wants to uplift that very same neighborhood to put it at a place where the market value of those houses are the market values of the houses that we like to run to or the neighborhoods that we like to run to which i commend that kind of responsibility i feel like that's the responsibility we used to have to our communities two generations back or our parents rather right and we seem to have lost that responsibility and you know how hard it is to keep money in the family when you're living in someone else's community there's many people who would love to give back to their people love to uplift their people but you are 30 kilometers away from your people how can you truly lend a hand how can you truly be there but in soweto going back to uh, Atlanta likes i like what they're doing because they definitely have i guess accepted that role ah but at which point do we start to take responsibility because we're not the only country that has foreigners that are coming in are running away from their countries some of them are running away from some of the worst stuff in the world things that we would even run away from if it was happening in our country so we're not the only country that's dealing with an influx of of foreigners that are coming into the country but they don't go into other countries and sort of take over and dominate the way that they've dominated our country so at which point do we look at ourselves and say you know what maybe the problem is us definitely the issue is with us G, but also the issue is because south africa is young in terms of democracy so all these people where they come from it's a repetition so it's failure after failure after failure after failure before they even get south africa they've started somewhere else yeah. the economy isn't in the black man's hand 
but the Pakistani people had already had some kind of economic power. So they already knew what to do and they had some resource. Very important. When they get here, most of the time these people have some kind of resource from someone who has a large pocket. For example, a friend of mine was telling me that there's a syndicate in South Africa where there's a gent who has a host of money from Bangladesh or Pakistan. You hit him up like I want to move to South Africa mm. and then he sets you up. He pays the people from Ortambo to smuggle you in, you and your whole family. Once you're in, you already have a rental place where you're going to sell. So the money he gets from that is obviously going to get commission. Hence why they always have places to rent. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not as if South Africans are just in jail. No, we're handicapped. We're working off a handicap. We're not there yet. You know how cheap it is to open a, a thing in a spaza shop from 9 to 15k? That's a lot of money for a lot of people. A lot of people don't have that money to just one day wake up and say, I'm going to go open a spaza and compete with this guy. Compete and sell what? Compete and sell what? Let's just be honest. They also have the advantage of having mass production and also have the advantage of the criminal elements of making fake products. It starts from there in terms of understanding the geopolitical climate of South Africa and the economic climate. Then from there on, we're then able to make proper solutions. Because when you're looking at it from a top end, it's very easy for, as they say, South Africans are lazy. No, South Africans aren't lazy. I mean, South Africa is not South Africa without the South Africans. So what the fuck do you mean we're lazy? I hate that thing so much. You know how many people wake up every day and they hustle, genuinely hustle. But unfortunately, they don't have someone to ask, please borrow me 20k. They don't have that person. Imagine there was some kind of platform where these individuals can get this 20k. Not a lot of money. We know the bank's not giving them 20k, that's for sure. Unfortunately, I can't. But if we all come together, put in money somewhere, and we're like, this money is specifically to open like maybe 10 spazas. Start there. A group of us. Maybe there's 10 of us, 5 of us, whatever the case may be. Start there. What that does is that in that community, black people see another black person owning a spaza. Light bulb. It's all about relatability as well. When you keep seeing a white person own ABCD, you keep seeing a Pakistani person own ABCD, that person doesn't look like you. That split second where you see someone coming to sell something to you because they own it and they are black, it does a lot. I'm telling you, those kids that go to school through Josie, when they see that, one day I want to own that. It's all about changing the landscape and the economic landscape of the country and who own it and how we then perceive it and how we show it to other people. Well, our people.